Poker Face is one of the latest shows to be released and it contains the acclaimed director Ryan Johnson. Focusing on a character called Charlie who has the ability to be able to tell when somebody is lying, it looked as though it was more of a curse than a blessing for her. We were given four episodes at once but due to there being a lot to take away from each individual episode, I thought it was worth covering each episode over the next couple of days before the fifth episode gets released next Thursday. So with that, let's recap, break down, and explain the first episode in this extremely interesting series. Here is Poker Face Episode 1 Dead Hand Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. This episode opened up with a seeing the evening in question that the entire episode kept referring back to from two different perspectives. We first saw it from the perspective of Natalie, who was the person that was murdered. We saw that she worked in a casino that was run by Adrian Brody's character called Sterling. She went into the room of a guest of the casino called Kane and saw something that was on his laptop screen. What she saw shocked her to the point where she took a photo of it and she went on to tell Sterling so that he'd be able to deal with the issue. However, he did the complete opposite. Due to Kane being an individual that spent a lot of money in the casino, he didn't want to ruin the business that he was running, so he was prepared to overlook the crime that he'd committed, and instead had her killed so word wouldn't get out and he wouldn't lose Kane as a customer. The killing was then pinned on Natalie's husband, who was also killed, so he wouldn't be able to say otherwise. With the evidence of him being violent in the past, it was something that was able to be believable. We were never explicitly told what Kane did or what he was looking at, but with the way that this show focused so much on clues in the small details, I feel it was something to do with children. This is based off of the news article that Charlie was reading when she was in the car when we were watching the day before unfold from her perspective. This is what this first episode was centered around, how the death of Natalie was impacting Charlie who'd been tasked with working with Sterling in order to dwindle lots of money out of Kane who was operating sub-games from the comfort of his own room and making money. As we embarked towards the ending of the episode, we'd seen all about Charlie's backstory, how she was known to be this person who was able to tell if people were lying, and she used that to her advantage when playing cards and made a bit of money in doing so in the past. But Sterling's father had banned her from playing and spread word to all of the other casinos in the area, meaning she was no longer able to make money and was blacklisted from most places. So instead, he offered her a job to work in the casino. This was then when we saw that Sterling had hired her to get in on a job to get money out of Kane using her abilities in reading people. However, pairing up with somebody who can tell if you're lying and was also best friends with the person that you had killed was always going to be something that was going to come back and get Sterling. Let's break the rest of this video down by the characters and how it ended for them. Charlie. On the night where we saw that the game was going to be going ahead, we saw that Charlie actually had other plans that were made in order to seek revenge on Sterling. Despite Sterling not giving a confession to what occurred when he had Nat killed, her instincts and abilities to read people was something that gave her the confidence in order to do the plan. Charlie had in fact recorded the meeting that she had with Sterling earlier on in the day where they talked about and rehearsed what was going to happen to Kane. She sent it to Kane as well. This then meant that he shared it with the rest of the high rollers, meaning he was never going to be playing at the casino again, nor would any of the other high rollers, something that Sterling's father would have been furious at. Sterling always lived in his father's shadow when it came to running the business, and as Charlie said in the closing moments, you've got to hit somebody where it hurts just like Sterling told her when he was talking about how he was going to get Kane. So with him being fixated on her calling the authorities in which he had control over, the one person that he didn't was his own father, so she did quite literally get him where it hurt. All of the clues for Charlie that were to do with Nat's death came at moments throughout the episode, such as the security detector not going off on the video due to the weapon not being on Jerry after it was taken away, the use of cloud storage, meaning the photos were synced up to Nat's other devices, and also the weapon being in Jerry's non-dominant hand. We as the viewers were also given these clues too, which meant that we could piece certain things together too, even when we knew what actually happened. We were almost seeing how it was so easy to be unpicked. With Sterling walking off the balcony in the hotel following the news about Kane and the other high rollers departing and never coming back, his father called Charlie and said that he was essentially going to make her pay. We saw Charlie destroying her phone, which was something that we knew that she cared a lot about, due to always being on it and absorbing all that was going on in the world. So in order to stay alive, we're going to see her go completely off-grid. Sterling. 
Sterling was a character that was played by Adrian Brody, and he played a casino owner who wasn't respected by his peers, due to his father being the person that essentially handed the casino down to him following on from him retiring. Sterling wanted to prove himself to his father by putting Kane in his place and taking a large amount of money from him by cheating the system and having Charlie tell whether or not he was bluffing whilst there was a mole on the inside playing. However, the fact that he had her best friend killed was something that meant that it didn't happen the way that he planned. On the night when the scheming was supposed to take place, we saw that once Charlie revealed that she knew what he did to Natalie, he essentially was flexing his power and wanted her to walk out onto the balcony and depart. However, due to her revealing the plan to Kane and the other high rollers, it meant that he'd ruined the business that he was entrusted to look after by his father. This then led him to walk off of the balcony due to the shame that he felt when his father was calling him, as he couldn't face the repercussions that were going to be met, showing that the advice that he gave to Charlie was the very thing that came back to bite him and caused his own demise. He was asserting his power in trying to prove himself to his father in making big decisions, and they didn't pay off in the slightest, all stemming back to when he harmed Natalie right at the beginning. He was never going to be able to lie to Charlie, and he knew that, so the plan was doomed from the off, and I feel he knew that it was coming. I thought this first episode was really good. It was so thought-provoking, and I found satisfaction in myself in realizing things before they actually happened due to the clues that were planted throughout the start of the episode such as the alarm not going off and the use of cloud-based storage. I'm intrigued to see the next episode, which is titled Night Shift, as it looks as though Charlie's ability to tell if somebody's lying or not is going to come in handy, as another murder is most likely going to unfold. Whilst we'll have these individual cases occurring, the main umbrella story of Mr. Sterling going after her will also be embedded within it too. Stylistically, there's nothing like this out there at the moment. It's beautifully shot, contains a really thought-provoking story with humour underlined throughout it, and it contains a wide array of talent amongst a really intimate cast, so everybody's able to shine. One thing that I do really like is that you're able to guess what could potentially happen before it does, and when it does come off correct, you get a sense of fulfilment, providing an added experience and layer to the show when you're watching. I think this is going to be a really good show, and I can't wait to see the other episodes that get released as the weeks go on. So, there you have it, Poker Face Episode 1 Dead Hand Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this episode? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.